as a forex beginner whenever you open the chart the first thing you want to do is to identify if price is going to the upside to the downside or price is basically resting if price is basically resting what you want to do is to join the price and rest now if price is going to the upside or going to the downside the first thing you want to do is to identify the key levels i'm going to show you how to do all these things in this video but before going to that if you're seeing me for the first time my name is divine and what i basically do on this channel is document how i trade and as well show you the mindset behind my strategy if you're not seeing content like this i want you to smash the subscribe button i'll be right back let's analyze gpsd and possibly know where price is going to be heading to this week is price going to be going to the upside or is price going to be going to the downside or is price going to be basically be resting Remember, the first thing you want to do is to identify if price is going to the upside, if price is resting, or price is going to the downside. I want to do that on the higher time frame. That means our higher time frame is going to be the daily time frame. We want to simply understand what price is doing on the daily time frame and be able to use that information to know what you're going to do on the lower time frame. We're going to be identifying two things in this daily time frame. The first is to understand where price is going to, that means direction. Secondly, is to understand the key levels in the market. Now, for us to identify the direction, we simply want to use our trend line to identify direction by simply identifying where the support is and where the resistance is. Now, with our eyes, we can clearly see that price is heading to the upside. Price is impossibly moving to the upside, but we should not worry about that. What we want to do is to simply use our support and resistance to understand what price is doing and how price is moving to the upside. Now, for us to understand that, or for us to understand what to do next, we want to use our Trend line to identify at this point here is a point of support. That means we have identified our support level here, and this point is basically our support level. And for every support, there's always a resistance. We want to now identify the resistance and know what we're going to do next. Now, on the resistance level here, you can see that this point is a point of resistance. Right? This point is our resistance. Now, for us to interpret what price is doing at this point here, we can clearly see that. Price that was acting as a resistance at this point here has now become a support. That means price is impulsively in an uptrend. And what you want to do next now is to identify the key levels. Now, the, our first key level here is simply this point where price that was, was acting as a resistance became a support. And this point now is basically our support key level. Right? We have identified support key level. This point is basically our support key level and the current point where price is is basically going to be our resistance key level that means we are assuming that, that price that point where price is is a high right this point is basically our resistance key level and here is our support key level we want to understand how price moves from this support key level to this point where price is currently at which is resistance key level we want to understand how price is moving at this point where the price induced demand zones because for every uptrend, there's always a demand zone. We want to identify the demand zones from this key level to this resistance key level on the four hours time frame. Now, on the four hours time frame, we want to basically understand the demand zone that price printed at every of these points where price was going to the resistance key level. That means when price was moving to the resistance key level, price have, must have delivered a demand zone and we want to identify those zones. Now, for us to identify those zones, we want to simply. I'm trying to zoom in very well. Yeah, I've zoomed in. Now, the first point of demand zone at this point here is simply here. Our price gave us here is the first point of demand. Right? First demand zone. This is the second demand zone here. We want to identify every demand zone at this point here. This is the third demand zone. And this is the fourth demand zone here. That means because price is an uptrend, that means because price is bullish, we want to simply allow price to come into a demand zone before we can continue the trend. That means an opportunity for us to buy is if price start coming back to the demand zone, then we can patiently buy from a demand zone. But if price does not come back to the demand zone, we are not buying yet. We are simply going to wait for price to come back to that demand zone. Now, having identified this demand zone, 
we want to basically go to the one hour time frame and refine these demand zones to become point of interest because it's at that point of interest we can be able to know how we're going to buy from we're going to buy from the point of interest that is being refined on the one hour time frame now on the one hour time frame we want to simply refine all these demands that we have identified on the four hour time frame for it to become a point of interest that means a point of interest is simply a refined supply or demand zone in this case a demand zone and for us to refine it we want to simply use a specific candlestick to represent that particular zones now in this case scenario we want to simply use this dodgy stick that appeared here to refine this zone here so this point is basically our point of demand and now for us to define this one, I want to simply use this pin bar that appear at this point here. So this point is basically our demand zone. And for us to refine this one, I want to simply represent it with this obvious dodgy candlestick that appear at this point here. So this point is basically our demand zone or demand point of interest. So this point here is also our what point of interest. I'm not moving again, I'll be blood on finish this point is simply our point of interest now what you want to what you want to basically do now is to understand if this point of interest is going to hold which one is actually going to hold and why is it going to hold now once you identify the one that have a liquidity resting above it before you can say this point of interest is going to hold and if i have to identify this if i have to look at all these points of interest where we can clearly see liquidity simply at this point here where price gave us an equal low at this point where price gives us an equal low that means what this means is this for us to look for a buy opportunity we want to simply see price retrace back into this demand zone here for a continuous buy which is the trend that means a buy opportunity is to simply wait for price to come into this zone see this liquidity and give us a chain of character to the upside what does this tell us that chances are that price is likely going to be retracing back into this zone to continue the buy movement and what i want to basically do is simply wait for price to come into this zone but what i'm going to do is this i'm simply going to wait for, wait for price to print more price action at this point and give us anything that looks like a sell opportunity then i'm going to be looking for a sell from this point to this demand zone here that means i'm going to be looking for a short time sell at this level here depending on how price prints more price action currently I'm basically, going to, I'm basically going to be waiting for price to give me a price action that will give me reason to sell. Then I'm going to look for sell from this point. This coin before. From this point down to this point here as my exit. That means if price open tomorrow be Monday and price give me a price action that will give me reason to sell, then I'm going to be selling from this point. My stop loss won't be as big as this. Probably I'll be risking maybe 30 pip stop loss and i'm going to target in this point here as my exit now my entry is going to be based on what price does if price open now what i want price to do if price open let me go to the 15 minute time frame and show you what i want price to do now what i want price to do is this i want price to simply open tomorrow be monday and possibly move to the upside if price open tomorrow and move to the upside then I'm going to be looking for a sell opportunity to this demand zone here. That means my entry is going to be based on what price does if price open. If price open tomorrow will be more than start buying to the upside, then I'm going to be looking for a sell opportunity to this demand zone here. Let's analyze gold and possibly see where gold is going to be heading this week and possibly for opportunities on gold. Are we going to be buying? Is price going to the upside? Are we going to sell in? Is price going to the downside? Or are we going to be resting on good? Let's find out. The first we want to do is to simply go to the daily time frame and understand the direction of the market by simply using our trend line to understand where price is going to and where price is not going to. Now, on day time frame, for us to understand the direction of the market, we want to simply use our, our trend line to identify where the support is and, most importantly, where the resistance is. And for us to do that, we want to simply use our trend line to identify at this point here is basically a support and a resistance line 
Now, if I were to interpret this trend now, you can simply see that at this point here, price was acting as a support. And at a point, it became a resistance. And currently, price is acting as a support. That means this point is simply a point of support. And for us, we were able to identify where the killer was are. We want to simply identify this point where price that was acting as a resistance became a support as our support key level. Right? This point is basically our support key level. So I'm going to remove this one. And for us to identify our resistance key level, we want to simply use this current point where price is as our resistance key level. That means we have understood where price is going to, price is going to the upside. But we understood where our key levels are. We have seen our support key level and also we have seen our resistance key level what i want to basically do now is to understand how price move from this key level to this key level and possibly know what price is going to do next on the four hours time frame now remember on the four hours time frame we want to simply understand how price move from the support key level to the resistance key level and be able to know what we're going to do next now, if we study how price move from this support key level to the resistance key level, let me zoom in properly. First, we want to see that at this point here, price was simply near giving us equal lows at this point here. That means this point is an equal low. And since price induced this equal low, how has price been moving? Our interest now is to basically understand how price moved from this equal low that price created to where price is currently at. Now, if I have to look at this point here, you can simply see that at this point here, price gave us a swing low here and here, price gave us a swing high. And currently, the point where price is currently at is simply a swing high. And for this swing high here, price gave us this swing low here. What this name means is this. At this point, we're probably about to swing high here. We're expecting price to give us a swing low as well too. Now, I've identified this swing high and swing low. We want to understand where price is giving us demand zone and supply zone. Now, the first thing first of all is to identify the demand zone and consider that our recent demand zone is simply this point where price gives us a rally a base and a rally so this point is simply our first point of demand and when price gives us this rally base rally price also gives us another rally a base and a rally so this point is simply our next point of demand and when price also gives us this demand zone price also gives us another rally base and a rally now, having identified these three demand zones here, we want to simply understand what to do next. And what we're going to do next is simply go to the one hour time frame and refine these zones to become a point of interest. That means we're simply going to be going to the one hour time frame and refine this zone to become a point of interest. Now, on the one hour time frame, if we are to refine these zones to become point of interest, we can clearly see that we want to represent this point here, this zone here, with this candlestick that appeared at this point here, this dodgy candlestick that appeared here. Now this point is our first point of interest in which price have already mitigated and price is heading to the upside. Now if I to refine the second one here, I can simply see that this point here is simply our next demand zone that we identified on the four hours time frame and refining it we're going to simply represent it with this candlestick that appeared at this point here so basically we have identified the second candlestick and now we have the third demand zone here which is simply a rally a base and a rally now if i'm to identify if i'm to refine this demand zone here i'll place it at this point here This point here is simply our refined demand zone, right? And as you can see, price have already triggered this demand zone here. Now, our interest now is to identify what price is basically going to do next. Remember, price is respecting demand zone, and this is the recent demand zone that price 
price was expecting. And as you can clearly see, price came to this demand zone, triggered this demand zone, but failed. Now, when price failed, price also induced an equal high at this point here, giving us liquidity at this point here. Right? Now, since price failed this demand zone here, I'm expecting price to trigger the next point of demand, which is simply at this point here. That means I want price to come back to this next point of demand to see if price is going to trigger this demand zone to continue the buy movement because price has filled the first demand zone here. And you can clearly see price filled the demand zone at this point and give us an equal high at this point, giving us a sign that price is likely going to come back to this point. Now the whole point is this, price is not triggering the demand zone at this point. That means had it been price came back to this point and triggered this zone, then we can be looking for continued buys. What I want to basically do now is to identify that price is likely going to come back to this zone here. And when price comes back to this zone, price is likely going to come to this demand zone at this point. So an, an entry on gold now is a simple way for price to basically move to the upside, sweep this liquidity at this point here, and then continue to the downside. That means my entry on gold is going to be based on what price does if price open. If price open tomorrow being Monday, I'm looking for, for price to go up a bit. Let's come back to this point here. My stop loss resting above this high here. And I'm going to be targeting, I'm going to be targeting this point as my exit. Now the reason for this buy is because price has failed this first demand zone here, giving us a sign that price is likely going to start going to a downtrend for a while. And for price to continue the downtrend, I want to simply see price sweep out this liquidity at this point here. That means I want to simply see price. sweep the liquidity at this point here and possibly head down to the downside here for this demand zone here so basically my entry on gold is basically going to be if price open tomorrow run up to the upside here and then proceed to the downside now the reason i'm selling gold is because price filled this first first demand zone here and when price filled this first demand zone here price created a supply zone here price created a supply zone here and the whole point is this I'm expecting price to use this equal high that price induced here to trigger this supply zone here for a sell to this demand zone here. And that's my entry on good. And I'm going to be taking this trade if price opens tomorrow, be Monday. I think that will be all for good. I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace.